Okay, welcome everybody to the podcast. Today we've got a great guest. We have AT from Finland. Super excited to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, AT, you're one of the people that when I when I saw you for the first time, I think it was in uh, some battle in against some Japanese B-girls. I think it was Narumi and uh, someone else. And it was yeah. you and I forget the name. Taya. Taya. Yeah. yeah. I was just so that blown was away. Yeah. That was probably Australia. She got game. Yeah. So it was she Chan and Narumi. Yeah, yeah. That was like the first time that I saw you guys and I was just totally blown away. And you guys the way that the way that you guys moved was uh yeah, just so fresh and yeah. Thank awesome. you. Um so Thanks for coming on and uh, let's get started. So yep. for anyone who doesn't know who you are, do you mind just doing a little like background, how you got into the dance or got into hip hop yeah. culture, whatever? Sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm 80 and I come from Helsinki, Finland. I started breaking in 2004, but I've been dancing already like since 95. Wow. I started as like, really young girl with some dance classes for kids like four years it was just like once a week thing but then when I was a teenager I started getting more into dancing and then in 2004 I started breaking like before that I was mostly like just dancing in the dance schools but when when I saw breaking and like get to know to the like the community and the jams and everything then I was just like okay I need to do this <laughs> this is what I want to do it was just so cool and like it was more more a lifestyle than just like taking the classes so i started like really uh from zero to 100 at, uh, immediately when i started and taya who you mentioned who uh, who was battling with me and she got game in australia she was like one of my teachers in the beginning and yeah that's uh shortly but then i was like years i was in uh part of the flomo crew but now i'm just solo and still still going <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah i see you're still active and judging and stuff um can you talk a little bit about yeah just like the finland scene and and what that was like kind of as when you were starting out yeah so when I started, I think that was like the golden era of Finnish breaking. Oh, really? And it was like really uh, alive. The scene was really alive and like jams was really heated. And many times when international guests came to Finland, they were like, oh, like I haven't seen this vibe for a long time in, in many places. Like it's really rare to have this vibe. And uh, it, like the ciphers and the parties, it, like somebody was saying that it's almost like the Bronx in the 80s or something. Oh, really? And I'm like, oh, wow. But yeah, it was really cool, cool uh, time to start, I feel. And like that time there was like uh, the scene was just like um, getting their name in the international scene. So there was people like super hungry. And I was lucky to be able to uh, see that from like a close distance. It was like really uh, good. I feel like everybody was like very um, like like Finnish people normally do very precise like work. Like they want to have their foundation and knowledge on point and they don't just like take shortcuts. So I feel like that was the way I was also taught in the beginning. So I'm uh, grateful for this. And I feel like that's uh, that's the base for my my dance that I I like I was drilling my basics like crazy so now I'm free to do anything with it basically yeah um you mentioned a little bit about yeah like Finnish style or like mentality can you yeah. can you talk a little bit more about that I know like everyone's an individual right but uh, yeah is, is there any like sort of unifying thing or something like that in uh yeah I think like uh the first time finnish breakers saw breaking was uh rocksteady crew uh, some rock some documentary of rocksteady crew mm -hmm. so that was what like they started in the beginning in the 80s and that like 
I feel like that has been like the New York style has been the influence, the main influence for Finnish breaking, of course, in, especially in the beginning. But I feel like that all you can, we can all, uh, we can see it still today that like um, the footworks and it, like kind of traditional breaking style. And um, somebody said that Finnish style is based on sweeps. <laughs> and I feel, I guess, like the footworks that we do, I guess there is a lot of sweeps in that. And the, like not only Finnish style, but the Scandinavian style mm -hmm. as well in the North Europe. Um, yeah. I think the style is very traditional. Right, yeah. And clean and smooth and yep <laughs> yeah that's that's something that that i noticed too with just kind of scandinavia in general with like yeah flomo and uh ghost crew and uh i forget some of the other like uh what is his name that crazy guy torb the roach oh uh, yeah yes like, yes norway you know, yeah so like people have have that sort of foundational style but they you know, they don't look like they're from New York, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I think is really cool. And like kind of what what I think is really important in breaking is like strong, you know, foundation, but you make it your own. Everyone For makes sure. it their own in their own way. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more about like maybe who were, who were some of the people or some of the crews that were around during that time? Yeah, so I would say that my main inspiration was Flomo Crew in the beginning, and I was practicing with them, and also Atta, uh, who, who was also part of Flomo before, but uh, now he's being Ghost Crew, and uh, now he's more into theater actually, but yeah. he's still dope. Like I've, I've been practicing with him lately, and he's been coaching me actually a little bit. Oh, really? So that has been dope, and he's still dope. <laughs> even if you don't practice every day he's <laughs> but one of my he's, favorites yeah yeah he's he's a genius but yeah those uh in the beginning there was also this b-boy called ima who uh was like very funky with his style and um ghost crew like the guys from sweden and norway they were also traveling a lot to finland and we were going to sweden and mm -hmm. we were at, like for sure they have been my inspiration as well but like i don't know like in the beginning it was mainly just the local scene that was like my inspiration i didn't watch so much youtube or nothing i was like just uh in the vibe and just hype for the things happening around me and um later I, like taya copied me at some vhs with some breaking clips so there was ken swift the rocksteady crew uh, skill methods um yeah, I feel like my, fun, some of my favorites from there was uh, Flea Rock and Ken Swift for sure. And like the whole Rock City crew basically was was really dope to see. I mean, th that was the time that there was also some uh, some people in the Rock City crew, crew who were not part of that anymore. So like some of the skill methods guys were also part of Rock City crew. Um, also Machine. Uh, yeah actual force came later like how they are so smooth with it mm -hmm. yeah those are some of the names that inspired me a lot right right can you talk a little bit yeah so like you're norway and or not norway sorry scandinavia has like a very kind of foundation heavy thing and and when i saw you like one thing that really stood out was uh, yeah your your footwork and how smooth it is and and all that um can you talk a little bit about like in your opinion and what makes good footwork what makes it stand out or or yeah uh yeah um i feel that uh for me when i saw the footworks like for the first times when i took the fir first workshop of breaking and that's when i started breaking i was like all the footworks looks like so magical when they're like just like floating on the floor like it's so smooth and the rhythm is so uh smooth and clear that you're like it feels like uh it's like a clock you know like oh. 
so there is like no mistakes so then it's like almost like a magic trick <laughs> like how like it's like illusion kind of mm -hmm. that like i was uh, for example four step it was like so dope how you're like turning and at the same time the feet go like tick 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 but your body is turning yeah, yeah. so it was like so dope and that's I, like I, i got so inspired to to practice because i was like i want to do that too and i feel like for me it's always been like um the rhythm is like super important and that is like organic and natural and i'd like many times people ask me like like how to be good with the music or like how to beat kill or something like this and like for, for me it has always been like uh just being one with the music because i have background of other dance styles so for me it, it's been like natural to also like always when i when i was doing the choreography classes we always like do the things like on the music of like of course like we're dancing so for me it's like uh there hasn't been even uh like a thought that like should I, how how could i do this like in the music because it that's how i start i listen to the music and i start stepping like if even if like the same as if i would be standing i'm like okay the music and i start two stepping first and then i start like creating something uh, more complex so the footwork's the same thing like first you have to be able to do the basics on the music before you can start doing like more complex stuff mm -hmm. and i feel like that's the mistake many times people do that they want to do a shortcut like they want to get like super dope super fast so they don't like appreciate the most basic things in mm -hmm. in that And I feel like um, for me, I, like my teacher Taya was always telling me to drill like six step, four step, all this like 10 times every practice. So I was drilling a lot. And um, I feel like that's uh, that made my transitions as well uh, smooth because uh, the the basic steps are like so uh, like strong. So then like it's hard to uh like when i do something more complex it's easy to come back with with the like the uh the basics or the the basics are actually like the key to the transitions i would say because mm -hmm. then like if you have the six steps all the all the steps of the six step very clear then you're able to like do tra tra transitions even if you don't do the full six step but you learn how to do the whip in the front you have to you learn how to like uh shift weight on the back or on the side so that's like uh that teach you many other things than only just the six step so yeah <laughs> that was quite a lo long answer i would say no, but no, yeah that's fine yeah <laughs> yeah no but you brought up a lot of good points and like I think it, I think it's something that's hard for a lot of like beginners to get is like drilling the basics. Like when I was starting out, I heard that all the time, like, you know, your foundation, drill the drill, the basics, know the basics. I think it's like even abstract used to do a workshop called like foundation is the key to creativity. And like that yeah. didn't make sense to me before. But yeah. like the older I got, the more experienced I got. I was like, oh, that totally makes yes. sense. It may, yes. you know. And like you said, you know, you, you know, that stuff, you're learning other things through just some simple move like the six step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, you brought up, uh, like Taya telling you to like, you know, you got to drill this and drill this and drill this. And like, I've had a, a few people on here, uh, that were like kind of in Taya's role of the mentor or like yeah. the coach or whatever. Um, and they gave their kind of perspectives on, on things. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the other side of being someone who who is being mentored like uh you know what was that experience like working with Taya and and now you said you you sometimes do some practicing with uh Atta right yeah yeah um yeah I feel like for sure for sure it's like a big honor if somebody wants to put the energy to mentor you Mm -hmm. so i'm like super grateful for this and it also uh like uh gives me like especially when i was younger it gave me so much uh confidence 
because somebody was believing in me hmm. and um yeah also actually like when i started like taiga was my first teacher but uh, at some point ata was also coaching me a little bit but then like uh we didn't work together for years but now we're like back to, back, back to that <laughs> nice. and uh, that feels super dope i'm like uh it's been like really amazing actually lately because um i've been like quite tired of my own breaking and my moves and my patterns like mm -hmm. uh, super tired i would say <laughs> for some years already because like i was traveling so much that i didn't have time to like renew myself and practice the way i want right so i felt like i just stayed the same and i felt like i don't i don't get like hyped to dance anymore if i'm like just doing like the same thing all over all over again so then um i asked at that like is he down to coach me and he was down and it's been so dope it's been like um because i feel like um he's been like kind of going the path like some years before that i'm going now so that then like it's it's been so dope conversations with him just to not even just not even about the moves only but like or the dance but just like philosophies and mm -hmm. his mindset how to grow how you can be able to grow as a dancer and still like uh like i would say like if you if you want to be like experimenting and changing your style but like when is it still breaking and when it's not and like um yeah like we've been having super dope sessions and conversations like sometimes he talks or like we talk two hours and then after i'm just like so mind blown that i'm like i have to just like let this uh sink like process, for a couple yeah, yeah. yeah process that for a couple of days <laughs> and it's been really like uh freeing and like opening like mind opening to get new tools for my dance to feel more free and like I feel like freedom is the main thing that I've been searching for to my dance lately and like like um like we've been talking about the foundation and you have to have the foundation so I feel like I have that already and I've been doing that for years and I feel like uh, for example, about the form, like we always, I've been always taught that, okay, I have to have the perfect form. But lately I've been a little bit more like uh, searching that how the form can change and how you can be like formless. Mm -hmm. So you feel more free. Mm -hmm. So this is something that Ada has been helping me with. And I feel like those things that were like, that I'm learning from him is something that I was already going towards to but i didn't know exactly how and he's been like helping me to find a way to do that so it's like i feel like when you're uh for me it's very important that like our relationship with him is so that it goes like both ways that like he listens to me he understands me he's not just telling me okay oh, you have to do this you have to do this like uh like um like before when I was younger, when somebody gave me a workshop, like some pioneers from the States or whatever, I'm like, okay, like I have to do like he says, cause he's, he knows like he's a God of breaking, you know? <laughs> so, so then it's like, uh, you kind of just do something, but you don't, even if you understand what you're doing, but you don't deeply, uh, like it don't come from the inside, you know? So I feel like that's, uh, important part that like the mentor also is ready to listen and like uh to help the one who's mentoring mm -hmm. and not just like to tell tell them like what to do yeah because like, like we're different maybe like maybe my way of doing is not the same as ata or maybe it is but we have to be able to conver like conversate and uh yeah, I feel like that's because basically what you want, like as a dancer is to like, you have to be able to find yourself and not just to be a copy of your mentor. So then like uh, the mentor also have to be able to just keep the keys and not just like 
try to make a ready package, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's something that, that has come up with, like, from the other end, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, good, good mentors are not people who, who control, but they, yeah. they kind of guide, they suggest, but ultimately, yeah. it's like your journey, right? Yes. Your, your choices, your style that you're trying to, you know, discover or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but that's super interesting. Like, and I, I think, I don't know, this is like my opinion too. I have like, I think it's something that a lot of older dancers start, if they keep going with dance and getting deeper and deeper in dance, like that's the kind of stuff that, that people I think start to get into is like freedom of movement, stuff like that. Like I know, or I heard, uh, well, I know like Ata is doing like something very similar, right? He was like a b-boy, but now he's in theater and, uh, kind of doing doing other things like just movement based right yeah it's not necessarily only doing like breaking breaking right yeah 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 or like uh i know i think sonic from from denmark yeah i heard he just does like that's all he does it's just like movement it's like human movement yeah something like that so it's, yeah yeah super interesting i'll definitely you'll have to connect me with that Ata sometime and <laughs> try and yeah. pick his brain about all this stuff would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And it's really, it's also just cool to see the other side of things, your perspective. And, and I think it's really important for a lot of people to hear like you, you asked Ata, right? Yeah. You know, something sometimes like maybe people are too, what's the word? Uh, they're not like humble enough to be like, Hey, I still have stuff to learn. I want to yeah. learn more. I think that's yeah. an important mindset. Actually, I've been really enjoying the mindset of being a beginner, like, cause I really like have been really changing my style and, and renewing myself. Cause like I said, I was so tired of the patterns I have. So mm -hmm. I feel so, it feels so freeing to feel like you don't have to be good. Like you're, you're the beginner now. Like you want to learn, like it feels so good actually. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that beginner's mind. And yeah. you know, when uh, when things start to get stale, that's like the perfect time to just learn something new. Yeah. Yeah, get a new perspective on things for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure you've you've gotten this sort of question or sort of thing a lot, but can you just talk about your experiences as like as a b-girl in sort of a a very b-boy world you know yeah yeah um yeah actually like lately i've been thinking of this quite a lot mm -hmm. and uh, um also like movement wise like move like yeah movement wise like i've been thinking like what is to be a woman in as a breaker and I feel like uh, the breaking the body language is like normally, not everybody, but uh, normally it's like super closed and everybody is like, like, uh, like a small package. And that's like that we call like, like the attitude and like, you have to have the form and this and that. And I feel like now that I'm growing as a woman and as a human being, I feel like uh, my mind is starting to open and like when I started breaking I feel like that was like the perfect place for me to put my anger there and like uh, like I feel like all of us are kind of un unconfident like when we're teenagers and we're like searching for who we are and then breaking was like the place where we're like we can kind of put that energy too so we're like there there we are something and we're always trying to prove something to us or somebody else and uh or the scene or whatever like that that was the the perfect place for me and many other people's for sure to put that energy and find ourselves but i feel like now that i'm changing i'm like uh my mind is changing because i'm growing and um i feel like the way that I used to dance doesn't make sense to me anymore because I feel like my mind is more open 
and I feel more relaxed. I know more, more who I am. So I'm not like, I don't have to prove nothing. So then like, um, I feel like that's the reason why I kind of needed to change my dance as well. Cause it didn't match my personality anymore. Mm. And that's why I, I've been like so grateful for for learning from Atta because I feel like he already did this process years before I did, and he kind of found himself set himself outside of the breaking scene, or as a, or not like not only as a b boy but as a human being. Hmm. So uh, that's what I've been also doing the past years. I feel and like f- trying to find like how is my dance now, so that it matches. Uh, as who I am with who I am so yeah I've been like feeling that when you grow uh, from a teenager to a grown-up woman I feel like your body language also like like your insecurities when you're like letting go of your insecurities mentally you can also let them go in your body language and that's what makes the movement more like uh, open and more free and more light so you don't have to be always like going super hard or like having the closed uh form or i feel like sometimes you can open up more in your dance as well so this is like uh something that i've been processing a lot and also talking a lot with atta and uh that's kind of the way that where i i've been trying to go with my dance so that i feel like it's representing me at the Mm. moment yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes like the the breaking, breaking scene and the breaking community, it can be very, like, it's good to hold on to tradition. But at the same time, like, if you're too hard with like this, these labels or something like, you know, it can, it can prevent like growth from happening, right? Yes, exactly. You know? And like, like you said, you you were a certain way when you were younger, but now you're you're not that same person. You've grown, you've changed. Why shouldn't your your style change? And yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's really interesting. I think not enough people think about that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, speaking of just like changes and your mentality and stuff, I I know that you fairly recently, maybe, <laughs> became a, a mother, right? Yes, yes. So can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Just because I know my parents always tell me when you have a kid, like everything changes, you know, yeah. and everyone says that, but it's hard for people to kind of like get until it actually happens. Can you talk a yeah. little bit about just, yeah, motherhood and uh, maybe how how do you balance that with your your life as a dancer and life as a mother and that kind of thing yeah yeah for sure everything changes (laughs) and um it's it's true that it's like hard to put in words but like i'll try i try (laughs) but (laughs) but uh, i feel like it changes you as a dancer in a good way but also there of course obviously there is like uh some sides that like are not the same anymore and not so easy anymore like let's say like when you're a mom the first year especially is like you're so attached to the baby because you're breastfeeding and like you have to be there and even if you're not there you feel guilty that you should be there (laughs) because you're the mom and um that's like something that you have to uh like find the balance with so that you don't forget yourself because you easily forget yourself if you're just like so uh, so attached to your mother like you're only in the role of mother and you forget the other roles you have because right. still besides that you're a wife you're a friend you're a daughter you're a dancer you're a mentor you're a student whatever mm-hmm. so all those roles are also important but of course like they have less time after you are a mother mm-hmm. and um like I've been lucky because my parents help a lot and of course like my husband Victor is also there so like I I have a lot of freedom as well but maybe not all the mothers have 
so um i've been lucky so i've been still able to like have this all process like i've been explaining that i'm really like trying to like find who I am as a dancer again but I feel like also becoming a mother made me do that because uh also motherhood changed me a lot and like I it has also I like I grew so much because I became a mother and like you really become a superwoman when you become a mother because like you don't have like before when you're tired you're like oh I'm so tired but now if you're tired like no All you're right. not tired you can still do you still have to be able to do everything. So like you find some things of yourself that you really didn't think you're capable of. And like, there is no time for laziness. There is no time for uh, all this that like, like before was like, ah, like ex it was excuses basically. But then like nowadays, like you have so like so much less time than before. Mm -hmm. So then like you, when it's your time to go dance or something, you really want to do that. Like you've been like, th right. that's your time to be something else than just a mother. That's your time to be yourself again. Like the, the, the core, I would say like the core self, the, the one that what you are without like any roles, like uh, okay. so yeah. just to like, uh, be, um, uh, it's like meditation. You're like remembering who you are hmm. without anything. Hmm. So I feel like that has been a very important time for myself to to go to the practice or like I was practicing quite a lot alone in the beginning because I just wanted to like take my time to really just uh, not to <laughs> like I, I don't I, I don't know it was maybe like I didn't want to be like in anybody's energy uh zone like i wanted to just be with myself because that was like i didn't have a lot of time to be with myself so i really enjoyed that was really my meditate meditation and like soul searching i was really like trying to figure out what i want uh, as a dancer how do i want to dance and that's what started all this process that i i was explaining that i'm like uh growing as a dancer and yeah of course like being a mother it's balancing with the time and at the same time it gives you so much energy like i said like you find those energies from yourself of yourselves that you didn't know exist so even if it takes a lot of energy it also gives so much energy so for sure i feel like uh to be honest like i feel much like happier also as a dancer after becoming a mother and like i feel like i know more what i want and i I, I have my like the reasons why I dance is like just for myself now because I don't I, I feel like I don't have anything to prove like no matter what happens like even if I lose even if I have a bad practice whatever that was like before was like sometimes felt like end of the world now it's it feels so little like it, it really doesn't matter like now like you still go home you have your son and your family and like that's my happiness it gives also so much freedom to your dance when you don't have nothing to prove there. And you know, also besides the dance dancing or as a dancer, like, you know, who you are besides that basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it's definitely there's some life changing events that can happen in people's lives. And it definitely makes you, it forces you to into those situations where it's like, yeah, like you said, I can't be lazy. I've got to really like step up. I've got to take more responsibility. And like, especially with, with breaking and just dance in general, I think as a, as like a community, it's very like free and liberating and, and very relaxed sometimes. And as a job, maybe it's kind of like, you know, everyone's sort of independent. Most people are you know, yeah. independent kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sometimes it's like, little bit too free and that kind of thing <laughs> so having these sort of things that that force you to to yeah like just be more responsible and be more uh yeah disciplined and stuff not to say that yeah dancers aren't disciplined but yeah yep so speaking of yeah like discipline i don't know this was just something that i was kind of curious about so in 
I know in like Scandinavia, like sauna, sauna culture is like kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, just being about discipline and stuff. And I know a lot of people, it's like enduring, you know, high, this sort of intense heat, right? Yeah. And uh, I heard it's very like beneficial to you, right? Yeah. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that and, and maybe just the, the history as best you can or whatever, whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't know the history like that, but yeah. for sure, like sauna is, is like, like, yeah, it's so big part of the culture. And like, if it's Christmas, if it's any, like, uh, in like special day, it's always mm -hmm. like sauna, like for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, sauna is somehow like the place where Finnish people like open up more. Oh, really? I feel like Finnish people are like a uh, little bit uh, not shy, but like uh, uh, how would you say this in English? <laughs> like, uh, like for example, like if we know if we don't know somebody so Just well already, slow to we warm don't. Up, right? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I feel like sauna is like the place where people show more their emotions and they <laughs> talk even for strangers you talk oh. in sauna that's like normal and like even if like even if people are naked somehow i feel like that's like maybe so like that's maybe the reason people are like o opening up also huh. like uh verbally cause, or emotionally because they are like they are so naked already, so they they have nothing to hide anymore. So they are just true, free true. to free to speak and more uh, feel relaxed. I feel, but yeah, sauna is uh, is something that like uh, I don't have my own sauna, but we have in our building. And mm. uh, when we go to uh, my parents' summer house, we always go to sauna. That's like everyday thing, like always sauna. That's like oh, really? where we relax. It's like it's not a nothing to do with religion but it's probably something similar as like having your pray praying moment because then you're like okay like like you it's like your meditation basically yeah like yeah so nothing to do with religion but more with like just being present i would say hmm. but it's like uh yeah it's very uh good after practice too like mm -hmm. it it uh makes your body relax and you feel like uh physically and mentally you feel like uh relax after mm -hmm. so yeah yeah like uh, I'm, i live in japan now and yeah they have kind of a similar culture with uh like they, they call it onsen but it's basically just like natural hot springs or just uh, like yeah. hot baths yes and uh yeah it's kind of very similar sort of thing it's maybe not yeah. like an everyday thing but people yeah. are really serious about it and like yeah. you know sort of the modernization of that is just people taking like hot baths yeah it's like a bath i have bath. A, yeah actually i have started like recently taking uh like cold uh like doing cold swimming that's the next thing i was going to ask you about <laughs> yeah yeah that's actually really good because uh after pregnancy i've been having a lot of like tensions in my core and my diaphragm so this has been like uh helping we me to recognize that when 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 do I have this uh, tension and when do I not? Because you don't always recognize it, mm -hmm. but like in the water, you you cannot do nothing else but just to re relax because your nervous system starts to relax. Right. Like so, then you start r realizing like, okay, I'm so tense here and here. So then in the water, you just like start relaxing everything, and after you feel so good. Like I feel like I'm ten centimeters taller, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, your body feels really good, and of course, like the first minute is like very painful. When you go to the water, you start almost like uh, hyperventilating. But then you're like, you just have to like, like breathe yeah. out, yeah. relax. And then your body starts to relax as well. Yeah. It's really good. I'm already like waiting for the, <laughs> the winter to come so I can do that. And during the winter, is that something that you do like kind of like the sauna or you do every day? Uh, not every day, but many times a week I did but uh depends on the people right. some people go two times a year some people go every day really right. like not many people do that actually it's kind of hardcore mm -hmm. yeah but I don't like to be honest like because because of the problems I had with my body and the tension 
that was the reason I started. But if I didn't have this, I, I think I wouldn't go because it's like, uh, it's kind of hardcore. Like yeah. you, before you feel like, oh, I don't want to go. But after you feel so good. But yeah, the after feeling is the best. Yeah, but that's that's something that's really interesting too, is like not just with cold swims, but with anything that you you kind of like put yourself through something. Yeah. Like it's like uh like hiking a mountain or something. Yeah, like yeah, you know, for the sure. Hike is hike can be really tough. But yeah, when you get but to when the you're top, there, yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? And yeah. I've heard, yeah, just like with cold cold water like swims or or some people do cold showers or cold baths and stuff. But it's yeah. like it's good for your your body because it like shocks the system, but then yeah. you learn to like uh, your body adjusts, and it, it's also good for just like uh, your mentality too. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like you said, you you get in there and it's like you know shockingly cold, and you've got to breathe through it. But you learn to kind of like control yeah. yourself and yeah, be aware totally. of your tensions and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, sauna life. That, yeah, that was just a random thing that I, I was curious about with uh, <laughs> yeah. with Finland and, and that kind of thing as I heard about it. Yeah, um, I guess maybe the last thing that I that I kind of want to talk about is I remember uh, some people were talking about this, but it was just about like competition and, uh, you know, like b-boy competition b-girl competition or just like general competition and yeah just wondering if i can get your your thoughts on that kind of thing yeah, yeah. what do you think of um different options yeah for sure i think it's good that there, there is like more opportunities for b-girls because mm -hmm. uh when i started there was not so much but i i think like Personally, I feel better to compete with the B-boys as well because mm -hmm. that's how I started. And I've been, when I, I've been talking with like B-girls from my generation, they feel the same because the, they are like we are used to also already like battling with the guys. So then it like it feels a little bit like weird to like, OK, like now you're not welcome here anymore, but you have to do your separate thing. So, yeah, personally, I, I feel I rather do the open battles, but for sure, for the young uh, B girls and the new generation coming up, it's uh, important that there is like they can also have like uh, equal opportunities. Mm -hmm. And like when I started, like for sure, there was no pr same price money for girls and guys if there was a B girl battle. Like, B girl battle was something small in the back room and little, maybe no price money, and the guys have the big stage and the big price money. So for sure, we're going to the good direction. But um, yeah, I still uh, I still like the feeling of like, like when I battled before, like when I started, it was like when I was battling with the guys, it was always just to I just want to like I, w I just wanted to be able to show the guys that I can smoke some of them as well. But it was never about just like winning like if i'm in a b-boy competition i feel like i this kind of also takes away the pressure because like you're not there to win you're mm -hmm. there just to like prove point that mm -hmm. girls can do this too yeah yeah i think that's like just a good mentality to have in general i think yeah you know? for sure yeah because if you focus like too much on the win yeah you know, that can cause some it problems. takes away the fun yeah exactly yeah <laughs> And, uh, you know, sometimes even even when you lose, you win if you yeah, if you prove your exactly. point. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes if you're too concentrated on the win and you don't have fun at all and you don't even do like you don't feel like it's your you who is dancing. But even if you win, you're, you may may feel like you're, you're not satisfied. Mm -hmm. But if but then if you're really like enjoying the moment when you dance and like you feel really feel free and uh surprise yourself and you create like some magical moment then you're the winner for sure like mm -hmm. even yeah. if you don't win yeah i guess you know another thing that that i'm just curious to get your opinion on or just your thoughts on is uh just where where you see like the dance going uh you know we have the Olympics coming up and, and just 
talking with some other people and we, I was reflecting on how far the dance has actually come. If you look at how it started out and in the early days and what it was like, because a lot of people, they're like, oh, some people look back and they're like, the 90s was amazing. This was the best and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And maybe it had lots of really good points, but there's yeah. there's a lot of good things happening now. And uh, yeah, so can you give your thoughts on just the state of it now and where, where you think it's it's going or where you where you would like to see it go or whatever? Yeah, uh, for sure. It's like good things happening for the dancers and a lot of more opportunities and like people are able to live with dancing more than like before. So that is definitely a good thing. And um, I just uh, hope myself that the dancers and the dancing don't let like the big opportunities define themselves. Like for example, that like if people get ready for the Olympics or whatever, they are still like true to themselves. Like for example, myself, like I'm in the national team of Finland and I'm like basically like also on the way to the Olympics, but let's see what's gonna happen. Like I'm, I'm not gonna compromise what I do or like um, I'm not gonna like change my way of dancing or the way I wanna like ex I was explaining about how I wanna find freedom and all this in my dance like I'm not gonna compromise this because I know what I want as a dancer so I hope that also everybody else too that like they don't start changing just because they think that okay it's Olympics you have to be something different than like this is not like a regular battle this is Olympics so I feel like this this is not something we want to happen because then the dance scene is going to change and the dance style is going to change to a direction that comes from somebody from somewhere else and uh i think like for example breaking being in the olympics it's great but of course we have to still represent breaking as it is and not try to change it to something more explosive and more this and that just because it's like a bigger uh stage or a bigger uh place Right. So yeah. I feel like it's important that we we all stay true to ourselves and listen to what we really want. And uh, then I believe that something good happens from that. True, true. Yeah. Can can you talk a little bit about like being on the Finnish team, I guess? Yeah. 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 So uh, basically, that was the reason I uh, asked Ada to coach me. I mean, the main reason was because I, I wanted to learn from him, but mm -hmm. the timing was, and uh, that's like what pushed me to do that was that the national team asked us to like uh, find coaches for us. So I asked Ata, but eventually there was no budget, but Ata was still down. So it, like it was, I asked already him and then I had to go like, oh, I'm sorry. So they told me there's no budget, but we still started like working and like, we don't go all the time. It's like we go when he's free and when he feels like and but he's been also hyped to do that because uh, he's not so much in the scene anymore. So I feel like that that brings him joy as well, that he's like still part of this and he can still work with because uh, he loves still like breaking as a movement and he loves to break even if he's not part of the scene like that anymore. So I feel like it's uh, it's uh, giving energy to both both of us. But yeah, the team, uh, we have like uh, camps four times a week, uh, four times a uh, year, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that would be too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so four times a year we have the camps, but uh, it's like fitness. I mean, like uh, not fitness, but like uh, more like uh, phys physical coaching, like, like type of training. Stuff. Yeah, conditioning, what we do, what we do there and uh some breaking we have as well but i feel like uh, <clears throat> i i still have my own ways to do so strong so i just have to like pick th from there the ways that work for me i feel like not all the things work for me personally and the way i i want to work and how the way i want to dance so it's uh i can get some help from there but mm -hmm. still i'm like uh on my own and like I still uh, basically nothing much changed but I can just go and get some 
things from them and some knowledge for the conditioning and stuff if i need to right but yeah we're still like our own coaches and like oh our own our own uh bosses and we still have to define ourselves how we want to dance and uh find the way that works for us to be able to dance the way we want right yeah that's super interesting to just think about like you know a lot of people are you know making making uh making pushes to to do more like training and and yeah like conditioning and things like that and really treat it like a an olympic sport this kind of thing but yeah. at the same time like you like you mentioned that you still need to keep that sense of like the individual and and what works for them and and because ultimately like breaking is your own movements right yeah so it's you know it's not like gymnastics where there's like this is the way that you do this flip and this is the way that you do this and there's a specific yeah. thing that you've got to do yeah but you know there's there's so much individual expression that it's yeah, it's cool i'm sure you know every country will be a little bit different but it's cool to hear for that. sure yeah. yeah nice um i think we're gonna we're gonna put a bookmark in it right now and maybe yeah find some time later on to to revisit this and and yeah talk about some other stuff but it was really great to have you on here and share your thoughts it was yeah thanks for the invitation it was a very uh i don't know enlightening talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, nice very human human centered <laughs> <laughs> nice like it. it was good um cool. do you have anything any like last words that you want to say to the people listening and watching or whoever uh, yeah just hope everybody enjoyed and got some inspiration to their yeah. own path and let's keep working on ourselves <laughs> <laughs> nice nice um and yeah if people want to say like follow your journey or whatever or or contact you for uh some job or something like that what are what are some of the ways that people can follow you uh yeah so instagram is bgirl80 maybe that's the easiest way that's pretty easy yep <laughs> um well at thank you very much and uh thank you everybody for listening and watching really appreciate it yeah thanks for taking the time it was a great talk and uh we'll everyone else we'll see you in the next one peace cool thanks bye <laughs>